So in mid-journey, crafting the perfect prompt involves a clear understanding of three key elements, medium, subject, and environment. By simplifying our prompts to focus on these aspects, we can guide the AI more efficiently, ensuring that our images are not only beautiful, but also precise. And this approach allows us to maintain a coherence throughout our images and maximize Midjourney's powerful capabilities. So let's break down each of these elements one by one. So medium, this refers to the visual style or technique you want the AI to simulate in the image. For architectural visuals, the medium can dramatically affect the perception of the design. For example, if we include the word rendering, this would be ideal for showcasing architectural ideas as if taken by a high-end camera. This style emphasizes textures, lighting, and real-world visual fidelity. Different than if we use the word architectural sketch, this one uses loose lines and a freehand approach, perfect for conceptual phases where the focus is more on the idea than the details. Or if I use the word watercolor illustration, this offers a soft, artistic interpretation with blended colors useful for presentations that aim to convey mood and atmosphere much more than precision. When creating architectural images that closely mimic photographs, specifying the medium in your prompt is crucial. The choice of words can guide Midjourney to stimulate different styles of photography, each capable of highlighting unique aspects of architecture. So here's how to describe various photographic mediums. When I use this prompt and change the medium, the whole image changes. Now, if you're going for a realistic camera feel, you might want to use cameras that architects typically use to take pictures. Some of my favorite words that I like to use are photograph of, insert subject, shot on a large format camera, or shot on a Nikon D700 camera, etc. So if you want a realistic camera but with a more vintage feel, you can search what film stocks are used for architectural photography and also have interesting results. Some of my favorites are Kodak Ektar 100 film still, Kodak Hawkeye traffic surveillance film, Kodak Portra 400 film, and so many others. Other words you might want to use as a medium are landscape photography, urban photography, aerial photography, and architectural detail photography. Now let's talk about subject. So this is the central focus of your image in the context of architecture. This includes not only the building itself, but specific elements that define its character. For example, overall building design. This includes the architectural styles, such as the words modern, brutalist, or art deco. Also, architectural features, details like balconies, columns, windows, or unique roof structures. And of course, materials. Describing the materials can highlight aspects like glass facades, concrete walls, or wooden accents. When crafting prompts for architectural images, the subject component is key to directing Midjourney's focus on particular aspects of a building or a structure. This includes the overall architectural design, specific elements, and materials. And when talking about overall building design, word precision is really important. Here, I always recommend to grab your favorite architecture book and read the descriptions to understand and find specific words that can work for you. You can use the words modern, Victorian, or brutalist, which can work well, but you can also be much more specific and have words like, for example, parametric, organic, deconstructivist, sculptural, pixelated, monolithic, modular, lattice, etc. I recommend you also specify structural elements, like for example, cantilevered balconies, glass facades, steel beams, facade treatments like brickwork, cladding, court and steel, etc. And also material specificity like polished concrete, wood, corrugated metal, and distinct architectural features like for example, a rooftop garden, a floating staircase, and intricate masonry. Now let's talk about environment. The environment is the setting in which the architecture is placed, which frames the subject and provides context. Context. This can alter the mood and narrative of the image. Key considerations around the environment include if it's an urban or rural environment, what time of day it is, and what's the weather and the season. So here's how to effectively use environmental descriptions in your prompts. So urban versus rural settings. Urban always emphasizes the architecture's relationship with the cityscape, potentially highlighting how the structure interacts with or contrasts against a dense backdrop of other buildings and bustling streets. On the opposite side, rural focuses on how architecture integrates with natural landscapes, such as forests, mountains, or plains, offering a serene or isolated feel. Also, you can be very specific on your landscapes, like for example, use the word coastal to talk about a place that's very near to the water bodies like seas or lakes, 
to reflect themes of openness or tranquility. Also, you can use the words mountainous to suggest ruggedness or majesty with architecture positioned against a dramatic rocky backdrops. Or words like desert, words like savanna, all of these words are very important. When talking about time of day, we can be very specific and use very specific words. Like for example, the word morning light uses often soft and warm light, giving the architecture a welcoming, optimistic tone. You can also use the word noon or noon brilliance for some bright and harsh sunlight. This can emphasize the raw textures and materials of the structure. You can also use the words golden hour to have some rich, warm tones that enhance the building's details and create a romantic or maybe a nostalgic mood. Or you can also use the words nighttime to focus on artificial lighting and the building's interaction with the night skies, suggesting mystery or vibrance. Now when talking about weather conditions, we can use words like for example clear skies, if it's rainy or if it's foggy, if it's snowy. We can also use the cultural or historical context of our site or where we're designing to be very specific in our prompt. So for example, we can talk about historic districts, we can talk about very specific historic traits, or we can also talk about modern urban centers that reflects innovation and contemporary life, aligning the architecture that we're trying to portray with forward-thinking design trends. Now, if we include a season, our image can get much more specific. Like for example, a building in the spring is much different from the building in the summer than the autumn and the winter. So by carefully choosing and describing the environment in your prompts, you can direct direct the visual narrative, enhancing the architectural subject with a richly contextual backdrop that complements or contrasts with its design. Now let's take a look at some example prompts. So if I wanted to design a university in France, I would maybe structure my prompt in the following way. Exterior photograph of the university building in a, in a serene suburban setting in France shot on a large format camera. The building features a unique architectural style with a recessed ground floor and a cantilevered grass, glass upper floors, creating a floating effect. The roof of the building serves as a multi-sport court enclosed by a tall metal fence. The building structure is entirely of exposed concrete with each floor slab exposing concrete beams beneath it. There are a group of students entering the building in a white and blue uniform. The scene captures a tranquil and airy atmosphere enhanced by soft daylight, soft shadows, and a natural color palette. So here you can identify things like the medium, the subject, and also the environment. It's a very complete and robust prompt. Now a poor example of this prompt would look something like this. A building of a university in France, the building is modern, and the day is sunny, in the style of Rem Kulhas. Now I think that to be good at prompting, we have to learn how to prompt and use the trigger words, and not always use reference architects. We of course know that using the words Frank Gehry, Mies van der Rohe, Rem Kulhas, Saha Hadid, will give us very specific results. But if we want to generate some quote unquote original and different results, let's try to be structured and descriptive with our base prompt. And let's try to avoid using reference architects. So now that we have our image ready, let's try to be more specific and use some image references. So inside of Midjourney, we can use image references to influence our base image. All we have to do is at the end of the prompt includes the letters S R E F and the link to the image address and that's it. So for example, I'll grab some photographs of my iPhone and use them as references. I'll upload them to Discord and copy the image address and then paste it. Now, if I use the same prompt and just add the image reference, this is the result I'll have. If you see that the influence of the image is too strong, you can use the words SW and specify a number. By default, it's in 100, so I can lower it to 50 or even lower, or if I want more influence, I can leave it at 200, 300, or 400. Now, you can also use an image reference to influence your color palette. And let's say this is the final point of view and image we have. Now, I'm going to go into Pinterest and type in color palette. But if you have a specific one, you can use that one too. We're going to click on remix our image, apply the style reference, also add the link. And in the influence of the image, we're going to put SW50. So I usually leave it at a low influence. Here are different images at a low influence. I just feel that it works best. And here are different images I exported where I just changed the color palette. This is one of the coolest features that Midjourney has, if you ask me. Well, it's not a feature, it's kind of like... Now, all of these prompts can be adjusted by using the settings where you can adjust the image, size, and ratio. You can select the mode and the version. You can also choose the aesthetics 
and also change speed modes. Let's walk through each one of these very, very quick. So first the image ratio. So at first you would think it's just the image ratio, but choosing this beforehand will also influence the output of your image. If your medium is a photography medium and you choose maybe a one by one square ratio, the chances of having a more vintage look are higher than if you choose a vintage film, but select a landscape ratio. Also increasing the level of stylization make, makes the images more like previous versions of Midjourney. You can play with all these settings, but I usually leave them as it is. I use landscape ratio, use a raw mode, use the latest version, and that's it. And when you have your image ready, you can, you can also play with some settings like zooming out, panning, and remixing, but all of that is for another video. Now, if you would like to see more videos on Midjourney, comment down below. Let me know by sharing, liking, and just watching the whole video. It really helps me out to create much more videos like these, which I really enjoy doing. So if you want to see more AI videos that I've created, you can click on this playlist right here. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.